I would like to welcome all of you to our fourth oversight hearing this year on implementation of the Sean and David Goldman International Child Abduction uh, and Prevention and Return Act. The Goldman Act empowers the executive branch with powerful new tools and a myriad of ways to successfully resolve parental child abduction cases. Like any law, however, it is only good as its implementation. Historically, some 750 to 1,000 American children are unlawfully removed from their homes each year by one of their parents and taken across international borders. International parental child abduction rips children from their homes and takes them away to a foreign land, alienating them from the love and care of the parent and family left behind. Child abduction is child abuse. Its negative impact on the child and left behind families can last for years, even a lifetime. Two of our witnesses today, like many in this hearing room and around the country, know firsthand the trauma, the tears, the excruciating pain, and the longing and heartbreak of a parental child abduction. David Goldman, son Sean, was abducted to Brazil and unlawfully retained for approximately five and a half years. Mr. Goldman tenaciously pursued every legal means of return, including expert legal counsel, in his quest to bring Sean home. Today, father and son are thriving, and we will hear from him in panel two. Captain Paul Tolan continues his heroic 12-year quest to bring his 13-year-old daughter, Erica, home from Japan. Captain Tolan refuses to quit or to be deterred despite years of frustration and setbacks. Such is this father's incredible love for his precious daughter. Our first hope, of course, is to prevent or at least mitigate the number of child abductions, and the State Department is to be commended for implementing a provision of the Goldman Act and for taking other efforts as well, uh, including the one that adds children that a judge has determined to be at risk of abduction to a no-fly list. In 2014, we saw a decrease in uh, the number of new abductions, 150, as a matter of fact, fewer cases than the previous year. And I want to do a shout out to Rush Marburg uh, on the prevention side, who has done a magnificent job uh, in this endeavor. But I am frankly concerned that the State Department has chosen not to impose any sanctions on any of those nations found to have engaged in a, quote, pattern of noncompliance. The Goldman Act, however, requires the State Department action on individual cases that have been pending for more than a year if the foreign government has not been taking adequate steps to resolve the case. The Goldman Act also requires action when, collectively, a country has a high number of cases, 30 percent or more that have been unresolved for over a year, or if the government is failing in their duties under the Hague Convention or other bilateral agreements, or if their law enforcement fails to enforce return or access orders. The Goldman Act not only shines a light on a country's record through annual designation of countries showing a pattern of noncompliance, it holds countries accountable and hopefully incentivizes systemic reform. Actions, as we know from the law, escalate in severity and range from official protests through diplomatic channels to public condemnation to extradition to suspension of development, security, or other foreign assistance. The Goldman Act was designed to raise the stakes on the foreign country's inaction or obstruction and move that country to end the nightmare of child abduction. In July, we received the State Department's first annual report on abduction and access resolution rates around the world. The annual report had some major gaps and misleading information, some of which were corrected by the supplemental data posted by the State Department in August. Tragically, in contravention of both the spirit and letter of the Goldman Act, the State Department failed to list Japan with more than 50 abduction cases among the 22 countries showing a pattern of noncompliance and therefore eligible for Goldman Act sanctions. This glaring omission, which can still be corrected today, sent the unfortunate signal that pre-Hague Japan cases were not a top priority. Cases like that of Sergeant Michael Elias, who has testified here, uh, he is a New Jerseyan, who has been denied any contact with his two children, Jade and Michael, after they were abducted to Japan in 2008. In September, uh, the State Department sent to Congress its first 90-day report on actions it took to bring the, the 22 countries most uh, to, the, to the resolution table. Those actions, including the marches, judicial rulings, uh, meetings, I should say, 
uh, and, and um, uh, uh, education efforts uh, and meetings, all of which are necessary and of real value. But notice, noticeably absent was the imposition of any number of meaningful sanctions, again, prescribed by the Goldman Act. I respectfully submit that this was a missed opportunity to convey to pattern of noncompliance nations that the United States is absolutely serious about resolving parental abduction. The imposition of sanctions says we mean business. And I would note parenthetically that sanctions, and I have done this in other laws that I have written, including the Trafficking Victims Protection Act, but also our Civil Rights Act, Title IX, uh, which has made all the difference in the world in women's sports, always carried a penalty phase, and that certainly got the attention of, of um, uh, uh, universities and colleges throughout the country uh, that the Federal Government was not kidding uh, and wanted uh, changes in how uh, these universities uh, did business. Notwithstanding Section 103 of the Goldman Act, the report makes no mention of MOUs or bilateral agreements to resolve cases, including and especially cases that existed prior to Japan's ratification of The Hague. I and many others have raised this concern for several years. I actually did it on a trip to Japan uh, with Michael Elias's mother, uh, his, so the children's grandmother, and said, if we don't get that right, uh, they will be twice left behind because they are less likely to find themselves uh, a resolution to the, their cases uh, because, of course, the Hague Convention is from the date of, of ratification onward. It does not have a look-back provision. The report details the State Department's effort um, to persuade India to ratify the Hague Convention, uh, a step that, if not combined with an MOU to resolve current abduction cases, which number about 75 today. Uh, risks duplicating the extraordinary misery endured by left-behind parents after Japan ratified The Hague. If Indi India ratified The Hague, it will, like Japan, grandfather pre-existing cases out of the convention resolution process. I would note that Bindu Phillips, who has been here and she, too, has testified, mother of Albert and Alfred, has struggled with her ex-husband in Indian courts for the return of her son for nearly nine years, nine years. And every time she thinks she may be on the, the verge of a, of a win in court, obviously there is always, like in David Goldman's case, another appeal uh, to bleed her dry financially and to make it difficult to ever get her sons back. Uh, Ravi Pomar has been fighting for his son's return for three years. <clears throat> Section 201 of the Goldman Act also requires the State Department to conduct a review of individual cases pending 12 months or more to discern whether the foreign government has taken adequate steps to resolve the case or whether actions are warranted. This individual case trigger for actions, as opposed to the pattern of noncompliance country trigger, uh, despite a half dozen congressional letters from various members of Congress asking for Section 201 reviews of egregious cases, the State, uh, to, to my knowledge, has not done a single review, and perhaps, uh, uh, Ambassador Bond, you can enlighten us on that. I am encouraged by a press statement issued today by Secretary of State John Curry, uh, in which he says clearly that he is looking to use all of the tools uh, that have been prescribed by the Goldman Act uh, as the beginnings of the next report uh, are, uh, take place. Uh, and he said, you know, in his press release, and I do have it. Uh, do you have it? He says uh, in his press release. And I think it is a very important point, uh, that there can be no safe haven for abductors. The State Department, uh, Secretary Kerry says, will continue to use all the tools available to us to help those involved in international parental child abduction cases to resolve their disputes and move forward with their lives. So that is a very encouraging note.